In this video, we're going to discuss many interesting examples for systems of equations problems. Now, it might seem like an easy concept, but the applications are extremely fun and interesting. Let's get started with this problem over here. Teams A and B are playing in a basketball league where each game results in a win or a loss for the other team. Team A has won two thirds of its games, Team B, five eighths, but Team B has won seven more games and lost seven more games than Team A. How many games has Team A played? So let's just say that since Team A wins two thirds of its game, it wins two A games out of a total of three A games, where A is just any variable, arbitrary. But now the thing is, Team B has won seven more games, so Team B has won two A plus seven games and lost seven more games. So in total, Team B has played 14 more games, 7 plus 7, 7 won, 7 lost. So a total of 3A plus 14 more, 14. And this is 5 over 8. Cost multiply, 16A plus 56 is 15A plus 70. A is 14, but A is not the number of games Team A has played. It's 3A. 42 is our answer because it's 2A over 3A total games. So team A has played three times A, so 42 games. Now this is a simple example, but now we're going to move on to some harder topics and problems. So work is just rate times time. Rate is work divided by time, and time is work divided by rate. So now here's a cool, interesting concept or theorem. If once some person can do something, let's say some task in A amount of time, let's just say it's A hours, and someone else can do it in B hours, let's say, together they do it in this much amount of hours or whatever other time unit you're using. It can be seconds, minutes, years, decades, whatever. It doesn't even matter. The point is, is let's say person, the one person can do it in A hours. That means in one hour, they can do one over A of the task. And the second person, if they can do it in B hours, in one hour, they can do one over B of the task. So in one hour, they both can do one over A plus one over B, which is A plus B over AB of the task. But this is only A plus B over AB of the task. We need to complete the whole task. So we multiply by AB over A plus B to both sides. So now the whole task is complete, one of the task, the whole task, and the amount of time is just AB over A plus B. And this is that formula we're looking for over here. And this not only applies to work. So if a problem says two faucets take A and B hours to fill, together they just take the same formula, AB over A plus B, hours or minutes or whatever units you're doing dealing with, make sure to stay consistent. Sometimes a problem will try and throw you off by giving hours in the first thing and then asking for minutes. This problem right here. Also, by the way, if you're finding this useful, be sure to like this video and subscribe so you'll be notified when new videos are released. Let's get started with this example. Abe can paint the room in 15 hours. Let's make a little table here, handy table. Abe, 15 hours. Bia can paint 50% faster. So Bia can paint 50% faster. So we'll take two thirds the time because it's working 1.5 times faster. So two thirds of 15 is 10. Bia can paint it in 10 hours. Hoi is two times faster than A. So we can paint it in 7.5 hours, half of the 15 hours. So let's continue with the problem. First, Abe begins to paint the room and works alone for one and a half hours. So Abe will paint alone for an hour and a half. So 1.5 hours, we're actually just going to write it as 90 minutes. Well, you'll see why later. 90 minutes, Abe paints a tenth of it. Why a tenth? Well, because 90 minutes or 1.5 hours, as the question states, 
1.5 hours divided by 15 hours is equal to 1 tenth. Because in 1.5 hours, Abe can paint, can take only 1 tenth of the time Abe takes to paint the whole room. So 1 tenth. So in 90 minutes, this is not a divide by sign, I'm just going to make it maybe a square bracket or something. 90 minutes. Next, Bia is going to join Abe. And then they work until half the room is painted. Okay, so now Bia, well, how fast does Bia work? Bia in one hour can paint a tenth of the room. But now Bia and Abe are working together. Abe can paint a fifteenth of the room in an hour. So together, they paint 3 over 30 plus 2 over 30 equals 5 over 30, which is a sixth of the room in an hour. So in one hour, they paint a sixth of the room. But they're not trying to paint a sixth of the room. They have to finish until, they have to work together until half the room is painted. A tenth of the room is already painted. So now they paint, need to paint four tenths more. So if they can paint this much per hour, how much, how many hours will they need? Four tenths divided by one sixth equals four tenths times six or 24 over 10. And this is in hours, let's convert it to minutes, times 60, 144. So this is 144 minutes. Now, Koei also joins them. The fastest of all the workers, Koei, is joining them. And then they work together until the entire room is painted. Which means that since half the room is already painted, they only need to paint the other half or five tenths of the room. And how long will it take this? Well, like I said earlier, Abe and B out working together can paint a sixth of the room in an hour. So if they can paint a sixth of the room in an hour, and Koei can paint the whole room in 7.5 hours. Koei, in one hour, can paint 1 over 7.5 of the room, which is also equal to 2 divided by 15. So in one hour, all three of them working together paint 1 over 6 plus 2 over 15 of the room. Let's simplify this thing out. Equals 5 over 30 plus 4 over 30, which is 9 over 30 of the room in an hour. Now they have to paint five tenths of the room in an hour. Five tenths of the room, not nine thirtieths of the room. This is nine thirtieths per hour, not hours. So per hour, if all three of them can paint nine thirtieths of, of the room, but they have to paint five tenths of the room, how many hours will that take? Five tenths divided by nine over 30, or we can just do times 30 over nine instead. We cancel terms out, we get 5 thirds hours, careful with the units here, which is 100 minutes. And now the question sneakily says find the number of minutes after A paints for the three of them to finish. We add them up, 90 plus 144 plus 100, that's 234 plus 100, 334. Final answer. To summarize, Basically, we just take the per hour rate for each of these three people, and then we add them up and for the amount of people that are working at a given amount of time. Calculate the number of minutes it takes for each stage, as we can call it, to finish. Now we're taking a look at this one over here. So the workers in a factory produce widgets and hoosets. Widgets and hoosets. Let's say widgets is purple and widgets are orange. For each product, the production time is constant and identical for all workers. So it doesn't matter how strong or fast or whatever else the workers are, we're just saying they're all the same, unlike real life. So for each product, the production time is constant, but they're not necessarily equal for the two products. So one product could be more complex or whatever it is that it takes more time. Okay, in one hour, 100 workers can produce 300 widgets and 200 hoosets. In two hours, 60 workers can produce 
240 widgets and 300 widgets in three hours. 50 workers can produce 150 widgets in M widgets. Find them. That seems like a mouthful of a word problem. But the trick is make it a system of equation that we can easily solve. Okay, so one hour, 100 workers. 100 is really a big number. Do we really need to be working that big is a question? Or can we just maybe focus on one worker? Let's say that we have, so we know that one hour, 100 workers can make 300 widgets, widgets, and 200 hoosets. Who's it? So that means one worker with, of course, one hour, one hour, one worker can produce this divided by 100 since all workers work equally. Three, I'm just going to write WI plus two WH, which stands for who's it? So that, that, that's a lot easier to work with, isn't it? Rather than, rather than big numbers like 300, 200, now we just have 1s and 2s and 3s. Second condition, in 2 hours, 60 workers, 60 workers, can make 240 widgets and 300 widgets. This is two hours, 60 workers. In total, 60 workers for one hour, 60 workers for another hour. It's basically 120 times the amount of work one worker can do in an hour. So to get this, we divide by 120. Two widgets plus 300 by 120 is 30 by 12, which 30 by 12 is, look, they both have a factor of six, so it's just five halves. So five halves, we're just going to call it 2.5 who's it. The key thing to note here is that the amount of work it takes to make these two quantities are the exact same. We're going to be using that, but first let's see what we're actually trying to find. We don't have to solve for every variable. In fact, we don't even know what the variables are, so-called. Just need to keep in mind what we're actually looking for, as I discussed in the algebraic manipulation video. In three hours, three hours, 50 workers, so 50 workers, can produce 150 widgets and M widgets. So we're going to take the exact same strategies we did before. We're going to look at one hour, one worker, breaking it down. One hour, one worker. It's going to be 150 times less work. So one widget, and we don't know what M is. That's what we're trying to find. M over 150, who's it? Okay, well, we know these are all going to be equal. This is going to be equal to this is going to be equal to this. And the key thing to note here is that who's it? Let, let's take a look here. We know that, let's say we have these two, the first two quantities equal. So let's write that. Three widgets plus two who's it's is two widgets plus 2.5 who's it's. You can subtract two widgets and two who's it's from both sides to get one widget which is half a widget or who's it. So if one widget is equal to half a who's it, then for every one more widget we produce, we can produce one half less who's it. So if we reduce the amount of widgets we're producing by one, because one hour in one hour, one worker can do the same amount of work. If we reduce the amount of work, if we reduce producing one widget, then we can produce half a more who's it. So in this case, this can be three who's it's because we're reducing it by one widget and we're increasing this by half a widget because they're equal as we found. Another way of thinking about this, if this is confusing, is to say three widget plus two who's it's 
is equal to, or equal to two widgets plus two point five who's it's so you can you can just once you get from here is we can substitute them back in to get that three that this is one widget is half a hujit so two widget is one who's it so you can always produce three point five who's it's equivalent words of stuff so if you can produce three point five who's it's equivalent then when we produce one widget we produce half a hujit it's the equivalent of half a hujit so therefore we can produce three remaining who's it's and therefore we get n over 150 is 3, so m is 450. And that's it for this problem. That is our final answer. And you can get all these practice problems and the rest of this giant Mastering AMC Tensile book for free. Link in the description. Top link in the description. You can click on it, download it for free. But now we're going to move on to speed distance time. It's similar to systems of equations, except now we're dealing with speed distance and time. And we've got some more interesting examples lined up that are going to be a lot of fun to solve in the next video.